Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Join this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway, the people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza, the podcasters. Hey guys, it's the awesome chat. I'm Mike Sork at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in Pittsburgh, PA and Mayhem Studios. And uh, this is the show where we talk about people doing awesome things around the area, sometimes outside in the tech world, in the creative world. And uh, we have uh, so many great talks that we've done over at awesomecast.net. Please go check that out. Subscribe to the show, however you like uh, uh, hearing it on audio, video versions as well. All the links over there, awesomecast.net. Uh, so this is going to be a fun one today, folks. We're going to get into the movies uh, with the uh, great film in the works, uh, Blood on the Leaves, a Pennsylvania feature film project, according to the website. And we have we have a, 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 a this is probably the biggest awesome chat we've had. Uh, first of all, on the couch over here is Ryan Haggerty. Hello, uh, Haggerty Media joining us. How you doing? Doing fantastic. And Thanks, Mike. Uh, and also on the couch, we got uh, Brendan Taylor, an actor from the film as well. How you doing, Brendan? Good. How are you? And then also joining us from Atlanta, Georgia, is uh, Dallas White, another actor on the film. How you doing, Dallas? Doing good. Thanks for having me. Awesome, awesome. So I guess uh, first off, we should get into uh, Blood on the Leaves. Uh, I've checked out the trailer. The trailer. I've checked out a bit of the website. I know I've talked with you, Ryan, about it. Uh, for the uninitiated, what is what is this movie about? Uh, so Blood on the Leaves. It's a uh, story that takes place and kind of has two worlds collide. You have this young kid from the city who's gotten into, into some trouble. His brother gets killed. He uh, avenges his death by killing that guy, and now he's got to get rid of this body, so he wants to get out of the city, get away from this life. He goes out into the middle of central PA to bury this body in the woods. Uh, meantime, you have the other main character. He's this hunter, and uh, lost his job kind of down on his luck. He decides to go bow hunting in the middle of the woods and comes upon this deer, and just as he's lining up his shot, he hears this terrible sound and a scream. Deer takes off. So the hunter goes running towards where he heard this sound come from, and on the ground he finds this kid from the city knocked out with a tree pinning the leg to his leg to the ground. Uh, old guy can't get the tree off of him, but uh, city boy doesn't want him to leave and go get help because hey, there's a body in a tarp. Probably doesn't want him to find out about it. Uh, old guy goes and finds out about it anyways, and the young kid from the city pulls a gun on him, and now they're stuck here in the middle of the woods with just each other. And, you know, it's all about the decisions they make in this moment. Mm -hmm. So, so, so this looks like it, 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 you know, checking out the video and everything, it looks like this is a, a very, is a very a woodsy uh, movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, looks like you got to spend a lot of time in the woods. Um, I thought that the production only took you guys about 10 days to get under wraps. Uh, it was approximately 13 days. I would say mm -hmm. for the majority of the, the cast and crew there, you know, obviously the two main characters, the one guy spending most of the time with his leg pinned under a tree. Uh, they were there for, you know, multiple days, two weeks. Uh, and then some people came in as day players, uh, like uh, Dallas actually came in the middle of the night, which... Uh, I'm sure he's he was tired. He's probably tired right now. He just moved to Atlanta. So I'm glad he's here with us. He's like all awake and stuff. This is nice. Uh, and then, Brandon, you were there for two or three days? Maybe? Uh, five. Five, five days. days. Oh, wow. Okay. See, we were, there like was a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a lot going on. And uh, yeah, so the, the crew and the director and everybody was there for the extent of it, the main characters. And then some people came in and out, and it was... It was great meeting everybody, though. It was a very, uh, you know, everybody worked really well together. Very fluid crew and cast. So tell me, how does a, a you know, this is, you know, a, a, an independent film. How does a crew like this come together? Uh, well, the beauty of the Internet actually uh, helped Indeed. a lot in this process. Uh, the director, uh, Vince Vincent Bernard, actually, we did a live casting uh, down in Pittsburgh at Nan Nancy Mosier's casting studio, which uh, we were very grateful to have. Uh, but I would say the majority of the people that we got actually came through video auditions. You can go online and there's all kinds of fantastic sites. It was called the Casting Pit here in Pittsburgh. It's got a new name now. I can't remember <laughs> what they changed it to. Uh, Set Real. Set Real. Thank you, Brandon. Uh, and so people were able to submit videos that way as well. And I know uh, Brandon actually came into the live uh, casting call. Uh, and then things kind of uh, changed, you know, evolved through the, that process. But uh, I believe Dallas and a lot of other people did 
I wasn't involved in the auditions, but I believe they did a lot of audition tapes that way. Mm -hmm. So I don't know yes. if you guys want to comment on that process because I wasn't really in on that. Like, like, yeah, I actually, I actually got a a side. I saw a casting call out. I, I don't. I think it was on Facebook. Um, and I was like, you know what, this will be a good project to be a part of. So uh, I think it was Vincent who sent me the side, and eventually I sent in my audition tape, and he said I liked. You know, he liked what I you know, what I, uh, what I did and I, <laughs> I got the role. So it was like one, it was funny cause now that you mention it, I didn't get any sleep the night before. <laughs> 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 and if you notice, if you notice in the scenes I've done, you can tell I'm a little bloodshot, you know, <laughs> in the movie. So, and it's, it, it's intended for the role anyway, because you know, cops do overtime, I guess. Right. You know? So, um, yeah, that's my, uh, and That's and uh, and so Dallas's role, he actually plays a uh, a trooper, state trooper named Trooper Bruce. So. Yes, yeah, he's a rookie in the police field, and so he's definitely still learning. In certain scenarios, Bruce is he keeps his composure as if he knows what he's doing at times. Um, he has to second guess himself on how to react to certain situations. Um, so the objective of this job is very challenging. And uh, which is what I like about the character. You know, it's there's similarities to the role versus myself. Awesome. Awesome. What about you, Brendan? What was your uh, uh, process like? Uh, I initially saw a post on Casting Pit. Um, I think it was it was actually four or five months before the audition. So they, they did a good job of getting um, a lot of people interested. And then I even revisited the page because uh, after I got invited to the audition, uh, which was like I said, I think five months after I um, submitted my information, uh, Vince was like, I, I wasn't even sure about the um, how how to get messages on Casting Pit. So after I, I got the role and I talked to Vince about Casting Pit, he was like, I wasn't sure to operate. And I was like, it, it is confusing because <laughs> there's uh, like little message boxes. But anyway, um, so I, I got an invite through Casting Pit. And also um, my friend, after I had got the invitation sent me a link on facebook and he's like hey you be interested in something like this uh because there's a bio of the the story and, a, and an outline and i was like this is this sounds like a really good script because a, lo a lot of the the things the submit on casting pit are either students um at point park which is really really good productions going on that are trying to get actors and a lot of things involved but a lot of Pittsburgh projects oriented that are trying to kind of get spur of the moment, get everything rolling. But um, that's where I saw the initial post and we went from there. I just did a real quick uh, Google search. Is this the, the Reddit group casting pit? The, uh, or... It's actually set real. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Now, sorry, it, now it's set real. It was yeah. like casting oh, P-I-T-T. Yeah. It was actually started, I believe. Uh, was he was he a uh, Pitt University student, I think, started it with a group of people. It's pretty cool, like the what he ended up doing with it, because there are a lot of productions wow, on right. there now. They're able to do what we did, you mm -hmm. know, and actually reach out to a very wide. Uh, like Dallas is in Atlanta now. Uh, he's originally from Maryland, and so you yeah. know he's been <laughs> wow. he's been a very busy guy this this uh, past uh, year and since I guess when we met him back in October, yeah. going all over the place acting. But uh, you know, it gave us that kind of a draw that it you know Pittsburgh talent is great. But there's a lot of projects going on. You right. might not get the person you want. So, you know, being able to reach out past that, uh, like, you know, our two mains actually came from Ohio, Cleveland and Cincinnati, uh, with uh, Amani, who plays uh, City Boy, is from Cleveland area. And then Bill uh, Nally, who plays Hunter, is from Cincinnati. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, so you know, I've kind of I've dived into a little bit of, of these like stage thirty two is one that I've heard of I've 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 come across. It's like kind of a social network for producers and actors. Mm -hmm. Now, this is mostly this is mostly just casting calls. Uh, I think you can do. Uh, there's, there's also crew calls, and I believe mm -hmm. you can also do that on there. Like I said, I wasn't as involved with that part of the process. Uh, the our director and other producer were kind of getting people set up that way. Um, so, you know, on the, on the cast side, that was, I think one of our primary ways. And then of course we had Facebook, right. um, we did the live casting as well, uh, which I can't give you a hard count of how many people actually ended up in the production. I know of at least two, there may have been three that ended up in the finished production from the live casting call. So, 
uh, you know, just as a, a process for filmmakers, mm -hmm. I would say doing the live casting call, especially, you know, we got Nancy Moser's casting studio, which she's, she is a C S I believe is the, the right way. American casting society, uh, which is, you know, nationally recognized. And she does a lot of extras casting and a lot of other casting for productions in you know, major productions in Pittsburgh. But it gave us kind of that street cred of, you know, people to take it a little bit more seriously. Yeah, official. And I was just impressed for the live casting call people that showed up and they knew all the lines and, you know, they had a headshot and all that stuff that plays into uh, traditional production or I'll say bigger budget production still rings true for something like this. Because, you know, when you meet somebody that is a creative that wants to do something, it's not that you're judging them on a personal level but on a professional level you're, you're seeing how serious they take it and all those little things add up and you go you know not only are they write for the part but they're serious about it and they showed up on time and that's all going to reflect and we have to work together for 13 crazy days and make this project right right and that set real um just a, a quick note it's um more than casting calls it actually it's a, a really good i'm i think casting fit i'm not sure if it was in the beta but you you can have photography um, directors, usually people, if they, they need sound people, you, you can post for anything, uh, whether it's behind the scenes or actually actors, even plays are on there. Um, let any, pretty much anything entertainment wise you can think of, you can post and network through there. So it's a really good tool, especially for people trying to get involved and you don't know where to start. That's one of the main things that I would constantly check. How how was this process? I, I don't know if you've, you've been in the process before this kind of tool was available, how, how long you've been along with this. How, what was the process like before you had like a, network, um, like a site like this? I would say you, you'd probably find people using something like Craigslist. I mean, mm -hmm. it would be another popular way to do this. Uh, there, there is in uh, Pittsburgh and other areas of Pennsylvania and other states film commissions mm -hmm. you can go to. Uh, Pittsburgh Film Commission is, uh, it's not funded by the state or anything like that. They raise their own money and they are kind of like the glue that c connects any production at any level to resources that they need. Uh, so Pittsburgh Film Office is a really great tool. Uh, there's also a Pennsylvania Film Office and you, you know, you can just go online and kind of look in your area and see if you have something like that already available. Uh, beyond that, something that worked really well for us is uh, tourism offices and boards. Like up where we were filming, we have a film office up in Warren, which is you know pretty far north of where we were filming, like a couple hours. But uh, the tourism offices actually connected us to a lot of the locations, and you know just strange requests for resources that we had, and you know they were all about it because we're making a movie and people are going to see what this area looks like, and we're going to give kudos to all these businesses where plugging on social media and all that so it was a it was a nice collaborative process that way too i think awesome so. awesome so you're uh, at the point you're doing a uh, indiegogo mm -hmm. and uh we've had you know a lot of people on doing kickstarter doing indiegogos uh, why did you guys pick that platform uh indiegogo uh compared to some of the other ones and uh the other one of our we have three producers by the way there's uh myself vincent bernard and craig anzana uh craig is the the force behind picking indiegogo but from what i understand uh not only does it have the benefit of if you don't quite reach your goal you still get to collect you know uh the money that you've earned as opposed to uh i believe kickstarter is still all or nothing uh, the other thing is they also have an extended function on the campaign. So even after the campaign ends, if people still want to donate, you know, depending on your project, if it's not just film, there's there's other things that, you know, maybe it's a charitable cause or something. People can continue to contribute to that. Uh, so that that was a couple of the things that I think it has going in its favor. It is pretty popular for film. Uh, there are some other ones out there. I think it's called maybe Seed and Spark. GoFundMe. GoFundMe is one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't think there's a wrong way to do it. Um, I think mm -hmm. it, it is more about how prepared you are and how you're presenting your project is making it something that's not just a, you know, a, a good looking film, but, you know, has like these personal connections with the people that help make it. Uh, you know, we had some nice behind the scenes on there and all that. So I think people like to see the, you know, how it's made, you know, like, Break down the magic a little bit and get down to, you know, how did you guys do that? sort You know, it's like watching the behind the scenes on the DVD kind of. Mm -hmm. So that, I think that was a big part of it for us was just planning all that and, uh, you know, also starting to establish relationships with 
publicity people and press like these wonderful <laughs> broadcasters. So uh, no ulterior motive. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I think Indiegogo just happened to be an attractive platform for filmmaking, but it had all those benefits as well. And, and I like that, you know, looking at this, you know, you guys have you have something. That's the other thing I yeah. think a lot of people get into early. Yeah, there you are. Um, <laughs> that you have something in the can. You, the sure. filming is done. It's wrapped up. You're looking to do all that. I don't think people realize the the the, the last mile of filmmaking is so long. Uh, sure. You talk about the sound engineering. You talk about the, all these other things that kind of go around it to do it right, to release it the right way in the theaters and everything like that. Um, that that need to be done. That really kind of gets uh, kind of left aside there. Um, and, and and it looks like you know you guys are in the right spot for that kind of thing. And it seems like the right thing on Indiegogo. You can do something with whatever you guys get, right? You can at least get some level of sound engineering, right? Or figure out, well, we can do X with this, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, awesome, awesome. Uh, so, uh, from the, hey, you know, I was looking at a, a little bit of this. Um, I, guess I wanted, to, I wanted to touch on. It looked like you guys had a light crew. Um, I noticed iPhones or something being used for for some stuff on set. Um, you know, and, and I know you know talk a lot on some of the other shows about how accessible uh, filmmaking is these sure. days with technology, with cheaper equipment. I think you guys looks like you're using the DSLR in there. I know working some uh, some some streams with you in the past. I, I've seen you know uh, using that as well. Um, can you speak a little bit to 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 the equipment use, uh, kind of the processes and 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 how accessible did that make uh, making this film to you guys? Sure. Uh, before we even get to the set process, I would, uh, I guess, maybe ask these guys a little bit about how, you know, how, how were you guys kept in the loop about, you know, before you showed up, you had to get like your your call time and your, you know, your 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 sides or your script and all that and, and kind of, you know, what, what exact dates you were going to be there. So how was that communicated to you guys? What was the the way that you actually it was got on mostly that? Um, probably the my iPhone. I use my cell phone for everything, really. I use my cell phone more than my laptop <laughs> because it's just it's very mobile. You know, it's not like I'm walking down the street on my laptop. You know, it's right there and handy, and there's apps for just about everything. Um, actually, I'm on my iPhone right now going this so Technology. you know it's, yeah like the camera on my iphone is actually better than the camera on my laptop it's insane how the world is evolving into this minimized you know state of technology where you can carry around like they have apple watch like who thought like you could do a bunch of stuff on a watch you know <laughs> uh just just real quick dallas is that is that your new digs there that we're seeing you in is this the new uh wild and fabulous home of dallas white yeah, actually. <laughs> these are, these are beats. <laughs> so, uh, and then then what about you, Brendan? Like, how are you getting all this material or staying in touch? Um, pretty much, uh, email, phone. Everybody had a designated job. Uh, we had it was a, it was a skeleton crew, but everybody who had a job was on it. So you had you had somebody, you had uh, Craig make the schedule. Um, you had uh. Rachel doing the wardrobe. So about a week prior, contact you. Hey, uh, let's get some shots about the wardrobe. We, we want to see what this character looks like. Uh, give us your options and get a couple of your options in. We'll pass it by Vince and see if he likes it. So uh, back and forth, just like, like I said, technology. Um, I would just use my phone just like Dallas. Uh, take a quick picture, uh, email it, um, get contact back hey we like this outfit and then the call times you come usually a day before the the when you want to start filming uh get in there make sure you write directions down because as good as technology is some places that <laughs> we were at it wasn't. i was gonna say you're 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 kind of out there i was kind yeah. of wondering about cell service uh, by the looks of things out there <laughs> yeah <laughs> actually when i arrived i was like okay uh this is the wrong time for me to not get in service. <laughs> oh, no, no. I must <laughs> say I it was very it. spooky arriving uh, early that morning. I'm like going down the road and I, you know, there's a bunch of cars on that street and I'm out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, you know, sometimes in the film industry, you really don't know if this is, <laughs> is this legit, <laughs> you know? Especially those Craigslist listings, right? 
Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Well, that's, oh yeah. That was that was what was fun from my end too. Is it was uh, everybody staying in this? It was a they call it a camp here in Pennsylvania, but it's like a it was a house. It was like a really nice house, and we had air mattresses, and some people had beds, and I slept on like this beanbag bed thing with a space heater. But every either every night when I'd be coming out of like a certain room, or every morning there was this new person almost. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, that's me, Brendan or Dallas or whatever. It was like, I think they're supposed to be here. I don't know. I haven't met these people yet. Uh, but it, it was, you know, it was like building the, uh, the, the Brady bunch or something. Right. It was, it was interesting. So, but, oh, you're who you're the person. <laughs> in the strip? Oh, yeah. I can see you. I see you. <laughs> like, I, they're I, here. Thank God we can film the scene. Yay. Oh, good. Yeah. 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 I said the hunter said it was like, it was uh, the guy that played the hunter said it was like, it was like a, uh, a college or something oh, where yeah. the people just kind of uh, sleeping on top of each other in there. It's seen there's actually pictures in the Indiegogo launch video of the place that we showed it. If you're watching the video version here in the beds in the situation there. So it was a bonding experience from the sounds of things. <laughs> <It so. was. laughs> yeah. We had a, uh, a little bonfire out back some nights and you know, it was, when you're in the middle of this, like the, the focus right. is so laser sharp when you don't have time or a lot of money to work with mm -hmm. that you have to get it right. You know, I mean, from I'm, I'm impressed by the actors when they're out there and the lines are just being rattled off. You know, I'm stressing about I'm running cameras. So I'm stressing about is it in focus? How does the light look? Blah, blah, blah. But they, you know, they did all that prepping beforehand and, you know, we're in costume and they're working with all the you know limitations of being wired up and taped with this mic and everything and. Uh, everybody just has to be on their game. But then when we were done with the day, it was nice to come back to that. Right. And, you, you know, we're very thankful to have that uh, that resource. You know, that that was a central location. It had shower, you know, washer, dryer, a kitchen. We had fantastic catering provided by Craig's mom. Thank you, Craig's mom. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and, and, and other people. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was nice to be able to, you know, know that tomorrow or, you know, the next time you had to film, you're going to be doing that. We can have that conversation, but also just to, to feel like you could be a person for a little bit and, mm -hmm. and, and not be so, you know, on the razor's edge focused. That's awesome. So. That's awesome. So, so tell me what the environment is uh, in Pennsylvania, in Pittsburgh. Uh, you know, obviously, you went very much out of Pittsburgh for something like this. What is the environment for making a film? It, is it, you know, obviously, we're seeing the big budget guys coming in here and doing a lot of stuff. Um, it seems like there's a movie truck downtown like every other week mm. uh, these days, right? Um, what you know, is, is it a good environment in Pittsburgh to be making this uh, this stuff? Uh. I would say uh, Pittsburgh is as good a place as any to uh, build and, and get into it. Like I, I just went out to an event. Uh, it's called Crew Connect that uh, Steel Town Indie does, mm -hmm. and they they've been doing a couple of these now. And you're seeing, you know, I guess the one thing about Pittsburgh you are going to see, and it's probably true in other places too, is you're going to have all different levels of film production going on, you know, uh, Brendan was mentioning, you know, we have different universities with film programs. So you get a lot of student productions, which can be certainly high quality uh, and, and have budgets as well uh, to things that, you know, maybe you're getting grants going, uh, maybe getting a little bit bigger of a budget, getting in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, which would be awesome. Uh, and, you know, and then on to things like the dark Knight rises, but, uh, even with those higher levels of productions being present here, uh, it's still very accessible. Um, you know, we have people setting up these, you know, like the, the grassroots uh, casting pages and things like that that are being done. Uh, the groups that are forming like Steel Town Indie that are encouraging independent filmmaking to happen. Uh, and then, you know, uh, having these other creative networks like these podcasting, you know, sessions that are taking place and getting together everybody's kind of encouraging each other in Pittsburgh. Me and Brendan were just actually talking about this in the car ride up that people are not a holes when it comes to what they do because yeah. they want to grow and they want to see everything be better. So mm -hmm. and I think that's a, it must be, it must be a, an age thing. Cause I've run into some old videographers and they're mm. like, man, these guys are assholes. <laughs> and it was always like, I was like, like it's, it, 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 I'm always refreshed when I run into a fellow videographer. That's not an asshole. Uh, but, uh, but, but, and, 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 and I've seen that, I've seen that with steel town. I've seen that with, with, uh, you know, up there work hard running the guys like you and, and, and Epicast and the crew, just these creative guys that just want to make stuff and, and learn from each other mm -hmm. and kind of kind of have that that collaborative thing go on. And it's, it's a really cool um, that that gets um, that gets, um, you know, uh, kind of pushed along here in, in this in this town. Right. For sure. So, but 
Excellent. Excellent. All right. So uh, the Indiegogo, uh, you can go check that out. Um, it's uh, BOTLmovie.com. Uh, uh, tell me, what, uh, where are you at with Indiegogo? What are you, what exactly you're trying to accomplish with this? Because I, I know I rattled off a couple of things earlier um, and, and kind of uh, uh, give me the pitch for it, man. So the Indiegogo, it's in the video, too. I'm wearing this leather jacket that's like way yeah, this, cooler, though. This sweet leather jacket. Let me see if I can pull it up again. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> like it, it, with this I don't know if I can compete with that on the screen, though. He looks this like is... he rented out this entire theater for himself <laughs> in this. Look at this. It's Brian Swagger to you. Yeah. <laughs> Swag. It's rocking that. <laughs> uh, that's actually one of the theaters we'll be screening in. So they are, Is that the yeah. one at uh, Filmmakers? This is uh, up in Clearfield, Pennsylvania, oh. pretty close to the area that we uh, filmed in. So. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So I've the uh, the, mas the master plan, which, by the way, when you're uh, doing something on this scale where you're going to make a feature film, usually a good idea to think about what you're going to do with it before you start making it in the end. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, where do you want this thing to screen? So uh, our master plan from the beginning has been to screen it in the places where, you know, the people that are from that worked on it, uh, you know, where they actually are so that their hometown audience can come in and see what they helped make. Um, so, you know, the Indiegogo really, it's going towards, you know, you mentioned, uh, music composition, uh, marketing, uh, potentially theater rentals. And we're also doing this as a road show, uh, which, uh, you know, totally stealing that from Quentin Tarantino with his, uh, hateful hey, eight. Uh, although I'm sure his was, is going to have his red carpet's going to be so much more plush than ours. <laughs> uh, but we're going to, we're going to have, uh, not only can you come out and see a movie, but uh, you come out, there's going to be a photo backdrop. You can have your pictures taken with people that help make the movie. There's nice. going to be merchandise there. Uh, we're going to watch it. And then afterwards, there'll be you know a very informal social event that people that want to hang out and talk afterwards can come out to. So this is, this, and I've been familiar with things like that. With Kevin Smith has been doing something kind of similar where he's he, been he stole that from us because we stole it from Tarantino. oh i see i, I got yeah. it i got it <laughs> i'm okay with it though. i'm flattered but, but I'm even flattered. guys like tarantino guys like kevin smith who have done the mm. big budget thing like are saying we don't want to go through the movie studios we just want to do that kind of thing and end up making more in the long run because you didn't put all that marketing in front of everything right. that that is like doubles your budget half the time right sure um, a very kind of grassroots kind of thing it works for them obviously they have the name value to begin with but this is really cool especially since you're hitting up like the places you filmed so there's mm -hmm. a lot of kind of collective um interest in there uh, right off the bat right so yeah and and with people you know i mean and the people that helped make it too i'll have to say like everybody that was a part of it was extremely professional and you know it's like we were talking about with the the networking in pittsburgh in general but with these people on this project if this film grows, you know, everybody else's career is stands to grow a little bit too. You know, it's, it's a calling card in a sort of way. Uh, so, you know, in the meantime, we've been kind of keeping track of all the different talent and everybody that's been involved with it. Uh, like I'll go ahead and, and plug somebody here on our uh, cast. We had this really great special effects makeup artist, uh, Nora Hewitt. And, uh, I was not in charge of hiring period. Like, I, I don't know how I got out of that, but, uh, she she uh, works out of or she was uh, working here in Pittsburgh and finishing up Tom Savini school. And she was actually the second person that we got the first person. You know, we had this thing with both that and our audio person did not eventually just weren't returning uh, communications, uh, which in a way it ended up working out really well because we got two stellar people. But uh, Nora was finishing up with school, uh, getting ready to move out to L.A. and, uh, you know, met her first day on set. Uh, real professional, you know, brought her kit and everything, did fantastic work, very, you know, easy to get along with. But uh, she was also on season nine of Face Off. And we're like, oh, well, how did you do? Well, it was still going on while we're making this movie. <laughs> so we we got to kind of follow along and watch this. And, you know, Nora's in the top five. And we're like, holy crap, Nora, did you win this or what? Uh, Nora's in the top three, you know, the next week. And she ended up winning the whole thing. Uh, nice. <laughs> so yeah i mean she's she's over in germany right now i think doing some wow. crazy stuff and hanging out with with her girlfriend and everything and they're they're having the time of their lives and all that so i'm just thankful that you know professionals that work on stuff like recognize that and others and she took us just as seriously as we took her 
Uh, you know, so I'm really thankful for everybody that did come out and do this and took it seriously. So, uh, and now we have, you know, uh, you know, Dallas too is like hitting this new milestone in his career, moving down to Atlanta. Uh, what, what kind of things have you been doing since you, uh, finished with production there in the middle of the woods? I know you've been doing a million things, but what are a couple of things? Um, I've actually, um, I stayed local. I do a lot of investigation discovery stuff. Um, yeah. You know, I'm either uh, the innocent one. Actually, most of the time I'm the innocent one. I'm the one who's usually getting killed. Uh, <laughs> Look at that face. <laughs> um, these are like true crime. I don't know if you guys watched Investigation Discovery before. Um, but I'm, I've done a bunch of shows on there. And I've done shows on Reels Channel. Um, there's a one that's deadly shootouts. It was about the Vietnam. Um, all of the... I'm sorry, this is like, it's like echoing, so I'm like trying to <laughs> okay. talk without, you know, messing up my words. But um, no, I mean, it's very, it's it's a lot of television. I like television more um, than film, but I also do film as well, just because it's, you know, it's an acting, it's the acting process. You know, I love getting into a character that I'm, you know, not even a part of, you know, that's something that's different and you're telling a story at the same time. So it's, um, it's a fun process. I love it. Nice. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, what about you, Brandon? What have you been up to? Um, re- as of recently, uh, I still try and, uh, become parts of a network with s- students from point park or, and just do projects whenever they come around. So I, I still check set real. And, um, mainly I've been trying to uh, start, kind of independent buzz like doing maybe like short little clips on instagram just using social media and trying to network out there kind of i might think of an idea and create like a short 15 second clip and then post it and then spread it through social media but anything that's spur of the moment or just i can network with but it's using any means possible really and 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 uh, Brandon, by the way, when he's in actor mode, or at least for our character, Rio is way more scary than he is right <laughs> now. It's, it's so funny like, seeing people on and off camera when they're doing their thing that uh, he's definitely able to flip flip a switch. And when I'm like behind camera filming, I can't like show how I'm feeling right because I'll move the camera or whatever. But there's some very exciting moments with both these guys when they were on camera where it's like, yes. <laughs> yes it's gonna look that's so awesome. awesome on a big giant screen Woo. that's awesome and you mentioned about doing stuff in 15 seconds i like we've we've had this discussion on on some of our pro wrestling shows as well about like that's a great spot for the wrestlers to like the the, the younger guys to and girls uh to kind of practice doing a promo you know getting on the mic and everything like that right uh, so it, it's kind of interesting that there is that little mini tool to kind of kind of stretch your stretch your uh, uh stretch your legs i guess right, right? and so, then and on top of that you see nowadays with social media and stuff you see memes uh you could hit the web and go viral with one with one video so it's it's a lot of inspiration and and on top of that it's just a lot of a lot of ways to use your creativity and, and go far if you want to <laughs> but i i took com- completely what's agree the, what's the one these days like uh what the sh- what the vans uh damn, damn daniel. daniel damn daniel with the oh, van, with the van, it's something new every week. Uh, I stay on my Vine compilations, though. Vine compilations, <laughs> and I stay on comedy pages That's right. on Instagram. I'm always looking for something new. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right. Uh, what, where can people follow you guys on? I, I got your Facebooks here on the screen, but where can we follow your Instagrams and, and everything if people want to check so out what you guys are creating? In- I believe my Instagram is bh taylor or mm. bh taylor. Let me double check because I don't look at my stuff too often just to make sure. <laughs> Mine's It's Dallas White. It's like literally It's Dallas White. You want to? Yeah. Dallas White was taken. Pretty, pretty simple. Pretty simple. That's good. That's good. Mine is at Awesome Cat. I mean. No. Eh, uh, no. <laughs> not, not. <laughs> yeah, mine is just uh, BH Taylor underscore. And my Twitter is at bh taylor two four. There you go. Well, go follow them. Check out the creative stuff that they're doing. Ryan oh, is yeah. at Ryan Haggerty. Excuse me, at Haggerty Media. Um, you, you can check out everything that he's doing as well. 
Excellent. Uh, and of course, like I said, the website for the movie is botlmovie.com. Check out the Indiegogo and everything else. Thanks a lot, guys, for joining us, talking shop, checking, talking movies with us here Thanks on the Awesome us. Cast. Um, <laughs> you guys can check out all the rest of the conversations at awesomecast.net. Also, let us know what you thought about this uh, uh, this discussion and anything else. Uh, anybody else we should be talking to in the area, in the creative, in the technical, in the, in the social media, or whatever the case may be. We, we, we got a little bit of everything going on over there. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Um, check it out. The, thank you to our awesome guests. Woo! You have been our awesome <laughs> audience. Thanks, Mike. Have an awesome week. Thanks, Mike. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.